Hey everybody, this is Jamie Shaw and Wonderwit, and this is Thriving Thursday. And tonight we're going to talk about an entrepreneurial journey. I, I always have trouble with entrepreneur. You know, I have a hard time saying it. I have a really hard time spelling it. <laughs> so. I feel that one. <laughs> it's like, there's some like, wait, where's the... Come on. I have to think about it. But all the... It, I, I figured out how to work it out in my head. All the E's come first, and I'm good. Right. I got mom brain, though. Yeah, so, you know, we I had a conflict last week. I was out serving on a bridge, and the time I got home, it was way too late to do my webinar. So we kind of canceled, but we, this is a follow-up to the Six Ghosts of Fears because what follows you on your journey, on your entrepreneurial journey to become, you know, self-employed, become successful this ghost of the six ghosts of fears that we covered follow you on that journey they're always antagonizing you they're always pulling at you they're always challenging you to challenging your values your standards you know and uh they're always around you you know so you have to learn to overcome them and uh you know you're always you always they're kind of following in line with the forces of evil a lot of you have heard about the forces of evil well the ghosts are basically the forces of evil that pull at you and you know and we're going to talk about our journey so a little bit you know both of us wonder Witt and i both have different journeys you know and it's not really our story but kind of our journey of you know our failures our mistakes you know and stuff like that so i'm sorry i'm clicking around over here this is what i get <laughs> okay there we go so I'm like wait where'd my screen go as you can tell i'm not the techie so obviously my tech side of the journey has taken me a lot of time <laughs> and, and jamie's done most of the work <laughs> he's done most of the teaching for me um but yeah i mean following up from our our last webcast where we had the six ghosts of fear and um, we had David on and it was awesome to have him on, but um, you know, following up from, from those, those fears kind of segues into the journey of entrepreneurship in general. And there's a lot of changes that occur. I mean, you know, here we talk about a lot about mindset and you you want to talk about a total mind makeover is what it is because not only does your way of thinking change, but the structure of everything you do in your life starts to change. You start to see things on tilt and from a different perspective and um, you start to function differently. So I, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that too, but I'm going to yell at my kids really quick because they got the TV on too loud. <laughs> And I was so muted. Here I'm trying to talk and I'm muted. But, uh, you know, a lot of us re begin our journey into a home business, entrepreneurship, you know, whatever you want to call it, is we need some extra cash or we got let go from our job and we need to make some money now. You know, and when you jump in like that, you know, um, you kind of – think you got to do everything yourself you got you think you got to build your own capture page you think you got to um, build your own website stuff like that you know and somebody mentions mindset to you know, uh, I don't need mindset you know but mindset is the start of the journey because the six ghosts of fear are going to attack your mindset every chance they get if you don't start developing your mindset right away because that's where the self-doubt comes in, that you're not good enough, uh, you're not doing a good enough job, you're not providing enough value, all those different things. And those are some of the ghosts of fears, you know, you know fear of uh, um, not providing enough value. Uh, here, I forgot what the fears were. I'll get my notepad out. I, I want to touch on something really quick because you mentioned, uh, you know, starting into the um, the space. We'll just call it a space because a lot of us come from, from different areas, whether it's, you know, 
affiliate marketing or, you know, the umbrella of just direct sales in general, or uh, you started a brick and mortar business, whatever the case may be, but you come in with the goal to make money. That's where everything starts is I'm going to make some money. And when you don't make money right away, it can really mess with your mind. Um, so there's, there, <laughs> there's definitely some shifts that happen there and for most business owners and again this this falls into that the the cliche of you know 97 percent fail well yeah because <laughs> when you learn you go through these um th these journeys you know everybody has their own path but when you go through this journey and you make these shifts um, your hindsight is 2020 of course and, and then you see okay I, I did this all wrong because I came in <laughs> I came in, you know, screaming and hollering, I'm going to make it rain up in here. <laughs> and, and it didn't rain. <laughs> then you start to see why. Oh, exactly. You know, and most of us come in with the mindset of an employee. We're going to work two weeks and we're going to get a paycheck. You know, and changing over from an employee mindset to an entrepreneur mindset. Um, you know, when I started my computer business, you know, I thought, oh, I'll get some computers in here fixed, you know, within the first couple of weeks. And it was like crickets the first two or three weeks. And like, oh, so I start, I, you know, build a fan page and start advertising in the local groups around the area and stuff. And then people that knew I worked on computers started contacting me to have their computers fixed and stuff like that. And then, you know, it grew as word of mouth got out. But I don't advertise a lot. My computer business, I, I get repeat customers and word of mouth customers. But, you know, when you first change over to running your own business, it's like, you know, you have that mindset. I'm going to do this amount of work and I'm going to get paid for it. Well, it don't always happen like that, you know, and, and the ghosts start messing with your head. You know, well, why did you do this? You know, uh, why am I not getting clients? You know, you know, online business. Why am I not getting leads? Why am I not, am I not getting sales? And you got to pull yourself back and look at what you're doing. You know, are you playing on Facebook all day long? Or are you meeting people on Facebook all day long and having conversations? If you're playing on Facebook, that's why you're not getting leads to sales. So, um. yeah, there's a, there's a lot that let's, let's just start with like strategy. Um, when we come into the online space and we start, yeah, I got this product and it's great, or I got this service and it's great. And, you know, maybe you've got a few supportive friends that are like, yeah, yeah, you could totally do it. Or, you know, you, you got a whisper in your ear or uh, maybe your upline, the person who recruited you to the business is like, you can totally do it, you know, with your pom poms. And um, they just, you know, post, 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 here you go, stay on, plugged in and, and meet people, make connections, meet like-minded individuals. <laughs> Um, you hear all this kind of stuff and you don't actually have a strategy. And it's funny because I, I remember my first experience with an MLM. They had a, a plan and that's not what they called it, but we're going to call it a plan. Um, they had a plan. There's steps, if you will, to, uh, you know, build the business. And, you know, you, you go in naive. You really don't know better. I didn't know better. And that's because I had a background in sales and marketing, but I had no clue about how to market on social media. And that's where a strategy really comes in is you have to find that strategy. You have to find, if you have a, a business plan, it should be something that's structured and sound. And like you could go into a bank and tell somebody, this is how I'm going to market. This is where I'm going to divide up my profits. This is how I'm going to pay myself. I mean, that's a business plan, something you could take to a bank and not be embarrassed. Not, you know, add 25 people a day. That's not a business plan. That's part of a strategy. So you have to find these, the balance and finding your platform. Um, I feel like that's, that's one thing a lot of people kind of get caught up in is not really narrowing down to one specific platform and you try to be the one man band all over the internet. And you think if I'm everywhere, people are going to find me. But the problem is if, is if you're everywhere, you're only there a little bit. <laughs> it's better to say, this is where my train station comes and I need to figure out how to get people to run through this train station. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. And most of us start out with the, the strategy of being a spammer and we have to go to spammers anonymous to learn not to be a spammer anymore because we get excited. We're so worried about, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a recovered one too. You know, uh, <laughs> we, most of us, you know, we're so worried about making money in the beginning that we're just posting our leaks all over the place, you know, and then the reality sits in, you know, you meet, I don't want to jump ahead too much, but you know, you meet a mentor or you find a mentor or a business Yeah, partner. see, and I mean, it's concerned when you're in it and you're, you're posting your products and you're posting your, your pitchy, you know, posts or, you know, all the emoji posts that are all glammed up, the copy and paste posts, all that kind of stuff. When you're doing that, you're thinking, you know, my friends and my family should want to support me. I don't understand why nobody's jumping on this. It's a great product. It's this, it's that. But here, the thing is, you're pushing it out there, and push always has the kickback. So the more that you're shoving food in somebody's face and say, look, it, it's amazing. Isn't it delicious? Look, smell it, smell it. The more they're going to be like, no, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's, it's just an, a natural reaction. Yeah. It's kind of like when you go into a car dealership and a car says, well, what can I help you with? Oh, so I'm just looking, oh, can I show you this car? Can I show you this car? You know, and he's pushing you the whole way, you know, and that's what it's like, you know. Um, and we do that because we don't know any better. And, you know, uh, we have to learn the right way. To, well, I can't really say the right way because there's really no right way and wrong way to do it. But instead, you got to learn to get away from the push. I would marking. say that there's don'ts. <laughs> there's some yeah. don'ts. There's do's and don'ts, but, but there's not a right way or a wrong way. But you want to get away from, like I was saying, the push marketing and start getting into the pull marketing. <laughs> Yeah, that's just it, is you want to get to the point where you start pulling people in, where people are just magnetically drawn to you. That's where it's at. Um, and, <laughs> you know, if you're in the MLM space or you're new to direct sales, the easiest way you can do that is be valuable. If you're in a niche, find out what else is relevant to that niche and become a resource to people. You don't have to become an expert. You can just become a resource because everybody starts somewhere. And I think that's the big concern with a lot of people is pushing for authority status and trying to get to the top of the hill. Okay, sweetheart, hold on. Um, you know, everybody tries to push for the top of the hill of the authority, but there's that whole journey in between. So not all of us are going to be, you know, Eric Worre status. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being number five instead of being number one. Number five is pretty amazing, you know? So just start somewhere and become a resource, you know, provide useful. If you're in health and wellness, provide useful information, provide nutrition tips or um, meal prepping tips. There's a lot of, you know, that tip and trick thing. It really does work because the more you give, the more you get. So, just, you know, work around that to start with until you actually master your strategy. Um, Great, for some know. of us, I would, sorry, Go I was ahead. just going to cover this. Really quick. Is this the techie talk? I'm not naturally techie. I have learned a little. <laughs> I'm going to be really conservative. But a little <laughs> when it comes to tech. And that's mostly due to Jamie because Jamie's an awesome teacher. But that can be one of the challenges, too, is finding the, the technical way, you know, manipulating algorithms in your favor, how to grow organically. Um, that's all stuff you have to take a webinar on or take a course on. So don't be afraid to invest um, when it comes to things that you're not naturally good at. We all have our strengths, and there's no reason you can't play your strengths, but work on your weaknesses, too. Right. You know, if I want to see Wonder Whit glaze over, all I got to do is start talking tech with her and she'll glaze right over. <laughs> like and it's just like that. Uh. Yeah. You know, and it's the cartoon with the, the eyes, the, where the swirlies, the black and white swirl goes in and like full hypnotize. Something that happens though, before we get into the techie stuff is, 
you know, you, you're, you're in, you're trying to build a business, you know, you're making mistakes because you don't know any better. And, and you have shiny object syndrome. Somebody has a new, the latest, greatest thing and you're drawn to it right away, you know, and you run to this and you run to that. And moth to the flame. You need to, I mean, and we've all been through it, you know, it's, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody because we've all been through it. You just got to put your blinders on and you got to focus on what you're doing and what system you're using, what L every LML in your, in your, in your, ML in your in. and, you know, just focus and just, you know, you got your blinders on and that's all you're focused on. I mean, a lot of people, when we first come in, we're focused on money, you know, Focus on providing value to your marketplace. If you provide value on how to do something, you know, you learned a new new gadget, uh, new rank, learn how to rank videos on YouTube or how to get more engagement on Facebook. If you teach somebody else how to do that, you build up your credibility a lot faster than just spamming your link out everywhere saying, hey, look at me, look at me. People are attracted to people. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the thing that, like you said, a thing that helps build up your credibility is being consistent. Think about it like payments. If you make your payments on time and consistently, you don't skip a month, you don't skip here and there, it builds your credit. So build your credit with your audience and show up consistently. Um, I have, uh, you know, I've had a couple clients in the past that were like, well, I can't do you know, lives every day is just too crazy. It's too much for me right now. Cool. Set a schedule. Hold yourself accountable. And you know what? The thing that's going to hold you accountable more is when you tell your audience, every Monday I'm going to show up. Every, you know, if it's one day, it's one day. Cool. At least they know. They know to expect you. And what's funny is when you do it for so long and you miss one, somebody's going to message you and say, hey, I, I missed your video. Did you do one today? Are you okay? I've had that happen before. <laughs> hey, are you okay? I haven't seen your video. <laughs> like, oh, um, let me do that real quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, a lot of people. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's called. It used to be blonde moments, but now it's getting to be senior moments. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, consistency, I mean, just going with consistency, that's, that's part of the strategy, you know, and uh, we, life happens, we all have a hiccup here and there, and you might get thrown a curveball that you weren't, obviously weren't expecting, so that's going to trip you up, but that's, that's normal, just get back on it, you know, don't, don't beat yourself up, oh man, you know what, I miss three days of content creation, and oh man, this, Oh, I got to make up for it. Don't, don't worry about making up for it. Just show up again. Just get back on the horse. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was going to say. You know, you were talking about consistency. You know, last week, my whole week was shot because my job, you know, I had to be out on a bridge job for three of the four or the five days of the, of the week, you know, and it was cold, rainy all freaking week long. And I'm right back here this week doing my webinar to be consistent and show up every week, you know, the only other time will, you know, that's something that was out of my control. You know, usually I don't cancel at all. I mean, I've been on here dead sick, dead tired and showed up. You're sick now. And you're <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of sickly now, but that's what, you know, but I'm still consistently coming here and showing up every week. You know, the only day we'll probably miss this year besides my little, things with my job it would be thanksgiving day because thanksgiving day falls on a holiday pretty much you know and i got double duty. i got double duty this this thanksgiving because my wife's birthday falls on thanksgiving so oh man yeah there's there's no way you're you're missing i'll actually be out of town so that's kind of funny you know and I wonder what brought up strategies, you know, and and I brought up focus. You want to focus on one strategy until you master it. And how do you know if you ma you've mastered it? Until, when you're starting to get leads every day, that's how you know you've mastered it, you know. And it don't have to be – I mean, some people focus on four or 500 leads a day, you know. 
one of the mentors I listen to consistently says, you know, they only get 10 to 15 leads a day. You know, if you're getting 10 to 15 a day, I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. I cannot talk at all. You're consistently getting 10 to 15 leads a day. Then you've mastered that system and you can add another an, or that strategy. I'm sorry. Add, you've mastered that strategy. Now you can add another strategy to it. You know, I use video a lot, YouTube a lot, Hangouts a lot. And I use blogging a lot. I'm still not consistently getting my 10 to 15 a day. So until I'll keep doing it until I consistently get those amount of leads a day, and then I'll move on to another strategy. Yeah, see, um, I started out on Instagram and I was doing really well there. And I was getting about 30 leads a day with that strategy and in various, you know, Various ways, but still, it was consistent enough to where I could add on Facebook. And I still didn't do that because, uh, I, well, at least I didn't do it right away because Instagram took up so much of my time. But um, once I got to a point where I was getting down my time management and getting down my, getting my leans consistently, then... I was like, okay, I can add in Facebook. And I started learning Facebook. And it's kind of funny because now that I've learned so much about Facebook, I'm like, maybe I should go back to Instagram. <laughs> and time management's a big challenge for you. It's a big challenge for me too, but you're a single mom. So you have to juggle your business schedule around your mom schedule, you know? So, and I have to juggle my schedule around my job schedule. Cause my kids were raised. So thank you. Thank God, you know, <coughs> but time management is a good thing, you know, and something I don't think you put in here that just caught, I just thought of, you know, is goal setting in your time management. You want to set a goal that you want to achieve during the day, you know, because well, let's face it. It don't matter if you're following a seven figure earner, an eight figure earner, or even I've even heard about the new nine figure earners. They still have to manage their time. They still have the same amount of time in a day. They have 24 hours in a day, every day, the same as you. And they have to manage their time just like you do. I know you guys want to hear about that. I was like, well, you threw me with the nine figure earner. And I'm like, I want to hear about this later. <laughs> I don't know of one. I don't know of one, but I heard my mentor talking about one the other day. So, mm, This I got to hear later. We'll get back to that though. <laughs> See, this is what happens after it's the after hours hangout that where the, the juice flows. <laughs> uh, I, I lost my place already. I don't know what I did. Yeah, you know, we try to give you as much as we can when we're here, but we keep a little secret back in the back after the webinar's over. I mean, that's well, yeah, because some things have to marinate, and you know, we're constantly evolving people, so there's there's just no way to get it all out in an hour. <laughs> uh, while you're managing your time, you're being your own boss. And if you go back and watch the intro video I made when we started Thriving Thursday, I'm gonna cough. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> I wonder what it said about it best yourself. I don't remember how you said it. You're your own boss, but you're all yeah. You're you're your own boss, but you're also your own employee. And that is that is true. I mean, most people forget that. And even if you, it's regardless of whether you're online or brick and mortar, you have a physical space. If you own your own business. You are your own employee. If you don't show up, nobody else is called in to take your place. There's no, there's, there's none of that going on. You know, it's not like when you work a corporate job and there's, you know, 18, you know, worker ants, worker bees there to kind of pick up the slack a little bit. But there, there's none of that here in, in entrepreneurship or in direct sales and I'm going to say it and be the most hated person ever, but in my defense, I did hear an eight-figure earner say this too, but entrepreneurship is not 
a network marketing business. And just because you have a network marketing business doesn't make you an entrepreneur. There's a lot of differences in between. So before you hate me too much, I would give it some serious thought and some serious homework. But when you, you are your own boss, you have to show up. That's one of the things that's just one of the things that goes with it. So if you're not properly managing yourself inside the hours of your day, you're shooting yourself in the foot every day. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, like I said last week, I was out on bridge job. My boss has actually been on vacation for two weeks and she came back today, you know, and I've basically pretty much been in charge over the office the two weeks while she was gone, you know, and I spent three days out surveying, so I don't know how I can babysit anybody. But the little kids have done nothing but fight for two weeks since she's been gone. That's all they've done is bitch and moan and fight with each other, you know, and I got to play referee. And it's like, no wonder I don't have employees in my business because I wouldn't want to deal with you guys all the time. I know, right? <laughs> you know, it's funny because uh, – on my my official you know title or whatever online is marketing consultant and it's in the last two days i've had two different people ask me um who works for me and then or if i recruit people to work for me and i kind of stepped back and i was like why would i have somebody work for me <laughs> like you already have kids but then i understood because I've, I've seen it too where some people will say marketing consultant or marketing, marketing executive, representative, whatever, um, and they'll just direct traffic to a system that does all the work instead of that. They're just, you know, the middleman. They're an affiliate essentially, but they're, they're giving themselves the, you know, exclusivity of, you know, marketing consultant and a snappy little title um, to kind of pave the way there. And I get it, but I don't think that that's – I, I have some ethical issues there. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. That you, you don't have uh, – I, I couldn't have employees. I just couldn't. I can't. I can have business partners because then I don't have to babysit. I don't, I don't want to babysit. I have kids. I'm so glad they're out of diapers. I can't. I just can't. Yeah, I mean – and I, I would want Wonder Wit to have to babysit me. She got enough on her plate without having, without having to babysit me, you know. So no, if anything, it's the opposite. Last week you still wanted to come on like super late, and I'm like, go get rest before you get sick. And then you ended up sick anyway, so yeah. I felt yeah. bad. I ended up getting home at nine o'clock that night, so I had fifteen hours that day, Thursday. You know, plus a three-hour drive to work, so I put in an eighteen-hour day. You know, I was I was pretty tired, but I was charged because, you know, we're on one of the big one of the big bridges in Illinois, where was what we were surveying, and you're you have to decide what's more important when you're out there on a bridge doing a survey. Do you get the shot or do you come home at night? You know, and that's way, the way you got to look at that job. And it's more important to come home at night than worry about getting a shot that's in traffic. And because the people don't care about you out there, you have to care about yourself and the rest of your team, you know? So that was one thing that's very draining on you and doing my job. So you got to, you know, first thing is priorities, which is next on our list. You know, you got to know what your priorities are when you're doing a job like that. And it works online the same way. You got to know what your priorities are, what you're willing to accept, what you're not willing to accept, what goals you want to set. And, where you want to go. And the next part of that is coming up with a uh, direct method of operation, which is, this is Wonder Witch specialty, so I'm going to let her talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, going, the priority, priorities are essential. They really, really are. Like for me, as a single mom, young kids at home, it's not like I have you know, a teenager to like kind of help out like, Hey, can you get the dishes? I got to jump on a webcast. No, I got to do it all. <laughs> I got to fold. I got to wash, fold, and put away laundry. I got to do all of it. And I still have to show up for my kids. And as much as I love what I do and I love, you know, I love throwing myself in 110%. I've been a woman obsessed for over a year now. And this last year it has been completely, 
completely, you know, balls to the wall, for lack of a better expression, it's been balls to the wall. And Jamie can attest to that. <laughs> this, this last month or so where I've kind of stepped back and been like, I need to go into my like hidey hole cocoon over here so I can finish morphing out. And it worked. It worked so brilliantly. And yeah, that's a whole other story. So let's stay on topic with the priorities in DMO. So what you do, you need that daily method of operation, whether it's a hardcore schedule that's, you know, 30 minute blocks, hour blocks where you schedule different activities inside those hours. And my biggest tip here is schedule all your have to do's first. Like I have to take my kids to school or I have to pick them up or um, I work nine to five. You have to schedule all that first. Then you create space and say, okay, I have a, a time block here where I usually just sit down and watch TV that I'm not going to do that anymore. So I can put in, you know, a power hour in my business or where I can connect with people and have conversations and touch base and all that do follow-ups, all that kind of stuff. Um, or if you're a little bit more lackadaisical, that's your, you know, natural vibe. That's where you want to kind of hang out. Come up with a list, three to seven different things you want to accomplish that day, whether it's big or small. Personally, I like doing three like personal things like home stuff. Like I got to fold laundry. I got to mop the floor. I got, you know, stuff like that. And then three business-based things. Um, this also works really well if you tend to be a little bit sporadic. Um, if some days schedules just don't work for you, I'm a very creative person. So there's days where having the 30 minute block scheduled out works really well because it keeps me on task. And there's other days where my vibration is just not there and it works better for me to have, um, less structure. So I alternate. I do. I honestly, I go back and forth where I schedule things out and I keep myself, you know, boom, boom, boom. And then there's other days where I'm in creation mode and I may or may not get my list done, but this is my list for today. So DMOs are, are just a really great tool to have. Um, and like I said, it's up to you how you want to, how you want to do that, but make sure you're hitting those priorities that way you at least get your top three in each section, you know, home life and business life done and out of the way. And that's, those are small, short, short term goals. And it gives your brain the little boost that it needs to keep going. Your brain says, we accomplished something today. I get a gold star. We can do this again tomorrow because that was super easy. And you've rewarded yourself. Exactly. You know, and, my, my method of operation is a little different because I have a, a full-time job. So, you know, first priority when I get up in the morning is coffee. You know, got got to have coffee. You know, and what are you, if you was doing a hangout during the day and you had to have your coffee with you. So I just got used to being on it, which I've always had my coffee every, every time in the morning. Anyway, I got to have coffee first thing in the morning. Then I get ready for work, you know, and I jump in the truck. And the first thing I do before I back out of the driveway is put, a mindset training on because I got an hour and a half to drive to work. So I got mindset on all the way to work. Then from eight to 10, I do my job from 10 to 10, 15. I jump on Facebook and I go try to meet five to 10 people or follow five to 10 people or just, you know, see if I got any friend requests, see if I get any messages because I finally got my mini chat set up. They, they introduced something new and I figured out how to use it already. And it's, it's working pretty cool. So um, then lunchtime, you know, I'll try to meet five or 10 more people or check, you know, direct messages or uh, um, try to meet five or 10 more people, you know, or do whatever I need to do. You know, if nothing's going on, I'm not getting any messages or any feedback or anything. Then, uh, you know, I'll put in some mindset and listen to it for my lunch after I go get grab something for lunch because I don't go out for a whole hour for lunch. I go. I either take my lunch to work or I'll go grab something. I come right back to the office, sit on my desk, and I do mindset. Then around 3, 3.15, I got a 15-minute break again. And I can take a break anytime I want. I just This is just the kind of schedule I, I follow. Um, I'll go try to meet five or ten more people or post something in groups like today. You know, uh, I think it was around noon, two o'clock. I think it was around two o'clock. I actually took the time early, and I – posted the copy for tonight's hangout on Facebook, you know, 
<clears throat> and then as soon as I jump in the truck on the way home, you know, it's mindset again on the way home. You know, I listen to uh, today. I listened to I just look search for a motivational video on YouTube and found one I like and I listened to it. And I happened to be a bunch of actual Joel Steen and a bunch of other preachers and with Eric Thomas mixed in with it and everything. And it, you know, and it was something that really caught my attention and that's the kind of things I do. You know, mindset don't have to be all hardcore mindset stuff all the time. It could be a motivational video or something that inspires you, you know, and that's what I like to listen to. And then as soon as I get home, it's well on Thursday night, it's prepare for this, you know, and I got to set this hang out up, stuff like that. Monday night, I got to prepare for what I'm going to talk about on the Monday night hangout. Tuesday night, I don't have a lot going on, so I feel questions. You know, wonder what needs help on a website or a blog or something like that. You know, I'm available on Tuesday night. Other people in our community know I'm available on Tuesday night. Wednesday night, I'm sometimes I'm Wednesday and Wednesday, sometimes I'm not. And I try to, if it's a training for the system we use, MLSP, if they have a good training that I like, I'll jump on it and watch it and take notes. So that's kind yeah, of my something out of it, I do that too. Right. Like well, that, well, that kind of goes in with the you know the shiny object syndrome. If you're taking webinars, it it's a really good thing to kind of keep it relevant to what you're you're using, whether it's your platform, your strategy. If you're using a blog and it's blog training, cool. But if you are hardcore Instagram and you see a webinar for Facebook, trust me. Just don't. <laughs> You're going right. to confuse the crap out of yourself. Right. You know, last night they talked about Twitter, which I have a Twitter account. I have quite a few followers on Twitter, but it's not my main focus. So I really didn't want to watch the training on it. So I didn't go last night. I mean, if it had been Facebook or video marketing, yeah, I'd have been there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very select. In the beginning, I definitely got into learning mode and stayed there for a really long time. Which, you know, served me well as a consultant, and that was really my reason for doing that, but just so I could have kind of a knowledge base uh, across the board. But I have my specialties. I have my areas of focus, and I just don't take clients if I can't serve them. And I'm honest about that. Uh, if somebody's coming to me for Twitter, sorry, dude, it's not my jam, but I can point you in the right direction because I know whose jam it is. <laughs> I am not afraid to send a referral. <laughs> right. You know, and, and here lately, you know, you have to always be training yourself, you know, learning new things. If you didn't notice in the copy tonight, I've been in an email marketing and a copy class here lately because my copy is improving. Every week it seems to that improve is. a little bit better, you know, and that's because I'm going out and learning how to do it better. There's so many great copywriters out there to learn from. In our community, we have a lot of great copywriters. Yeah. The best way I have learned, you know, I, I talk about it all the time. Diane Hockman is one of my big mentors. She sends an email at least once a day. I take that email, I print it out, and I have a notebook that I of hers, and I handwrite her copy. That way I can learn to write emails like she does. Nice. I didn't realize you did that. That's impressive. That's yeah. really, and see, I'm, I'm the sponge. I can pick up certain linguistic patterns. So when I read her emails, I'm like, okay, I see what she did there. And I see, okay. And <laughs> when she did her psychological trigger, um, what was it? Oh, the word just escaped me. Mastermind. When she did her mastermind and there was, it was covering the psychological trigger. I actually went through, re-listened to the audio and typed them all out. And then, of course, I have my, my other points of reference, too, Maslow's hierarchy and, and whatnot. So when she's writing, I can see, okay, that triggered this response. I get what she's doing here. And there's some things that don't trigger me, but I can see how they would trigger other people. So it's a really great, it's a really great tool, guys. If you aren't on, like, your favorite marketers email lists even if they are not relevant to your industry you should be just so you can pick up how they do things um 
for me, I'm I'm more of a why person. I'm I'm on top of the the mindset, the innovation. That that's where I really thrive. So how and what are not <laughs> aren't really the easy points for me. Um, how comes pretty naturally, but what is you know the worker bee status, and my mind isn't built for it. So I uh, it, it takes me a little bit to kind of learn these things, but. You know, that kind of goes into with our next point of um, finding your purpose. And, Jamie, I don't know if you want to say anything before I get started on this because you know that I'll just talk and talk and talk. I'll go ahead. You know, I can always jump in when I need to. <laughs> okay. I just thought I'd give you a chance. You said no. It's on video. <laughs> Uh, okay, so finding your purpose, this this is my jam because finding why is monumentally important when you're an entrepreneur. If you're in direct sales, it's still very relevant. If you're in MLM, affiliate marketing, this is still relevant. You need to know why you're doing these things. Why do you want your freedom? What do you want to accomplish? How do you want to do it? You need to understand these principles and I'm just going to throw this out there that Simon Sinek start with why is a brilliant, brilliant book. And, um, the audio book serves really, really well, but so uh, just a recommendation out there. If you need help with this, that's a great place to start. It'll really get you to think introspectively, but finding your purpose, what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. I want to start a business and I want to make a lot of money and yeah. Okay. But why? Why? What's, what's your real mission behind that? Why do you want to start this? Is it really to provide for your family? And yeah, don't get me wrong. As as parents, we want to provide a better life for our family, our spouses, our children, our extended family. We want to be able to do those things. But why? What is your psychological trigger? This is important. And this was the real reason I dove into that mastermind on psychological triggers was you need to know how to trigger yourself. In your own business, motivation is crap. Motivation comes from within. You can listen to all the motivational speakers out there in the world. You can listen to every podcast, every mindset training. But if your motivation from within you is not there, it's all for naught. Because you're going to get these temporary bursts of where you kind of know what you're doing and yeah, you're a little bit on fire and yeah, this is my why because I'm going to do this for my family and I'm going to show up. I'm sorry, but everybody's why is a little bit selfish, at least a little bit selfish. And as a parent, I'm going to give you full permission to be full on selfish. As parents, we sacrifice a lot for our kids, but this is one area where you cannot sacrifice yourself. So find your mission. If it's, you know, because you went through a trauma and you want to help other people going through that trauma. If you want to create um, a massive amount of profit because you like prestige and you like the, um, you know, the status that goes with it, then own that. Don't feel, <laughs> you should feel bad for that. Everybody wants nice, beautiful things, whether they want to admit it or not. So if you can just own that and say, you know what? Yeah, I do want to live in the lap of luxury and that's why I'm doing this. Great. Step into it and own it. Um, you have to figure out, once you find this mission, what your message is. Uh, are you, you know, telling people, are you showing up and say, yeah, I want to make a lot of money. That's my thing because I want to own nice, expensive things. Cool. What's your message? Is it, it's possible? Like, there's nothing wrong with this lifestyle. This lifestyle doesn't make me a bad person. This lifestyle is amazing and you can have it too. I mean, what's your message? What are you, what are you going to stand on your soapbox and preach? <laughs> what is that really? Is it, hey, this marketing gig isn't really that hard? Or, hey, it is really hard, but it pays off? You know, there's all kinds of messages. You just have to find the one that's tailored to you and tailored to the long haul where you can evolve over time. I know my message has evolved um, not really that much. It's just taken on different shape. So um, figure out where you want to make your impact. And I think this is another really important topic or, or kind of it's in with purpose. Is your purpose with your 
business to create impact or to create profit? Yes, you can create both, but you cannot do them both simultaneously. You can either create impact by profit. So like you can make a bunch of money and then say, hey, I worked my tail off and this is my impact message and you know, um, the status quo doesn't apply to me or, you know, for me as a Hispanic female who never went to college, that's one really big impact message and a single mom on top of that. Yeah. Okay. That's an impact. If I wanted to take that and make that my mission and my message, then I could do that. Um, or do you want to create profit and then create impact because you have the profit to do it? Or do you want to lead with impact? Do you want to lead with, you know, preaching about something like self-worth or mindset or self-care or health and wellness? Do you want to lead with your story? Essentially, that's what that comes down to. Do you want to lead with your story and create results focused around that story? There's, a, there's different ways to approach this, but you're either creating impact and by default creating profit because you're over here, you're focused on this impact message and you build your audience, you engage your audience and you sell your audience and that's how that works. Or you create mass amounts of profits and results and then you create the impact around that. It's one or the other. You can do both, but you focus on one and by default, the other happens. Jamie, I've kind of rambled all over the place, but jump in here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that, that's fine, you know, and you know what you're saying is totally true because you have to have that purpose. What makes you get out of bed in the morning? Uh, all of you know I'm a veteran. Veterans Day is Saturday. You know, one of the big things that I want to be really successful for is because I want to help veterans. You know, because there's one thing people don't know, and these are little statistics. Between 1999 and 2010, roughly 22 veterans were dying by suicide per day. That's one every 65 minutes. You know, they come home from protecting and serving our country with battle scars. Something that you and I don't know what they go through. I mean, I kind of know what they go through. I'm, I'm a veteran, but I never served in the wartime. But I know with a brotherhood that they carry on each other. And to have your best friend die in your arms is something that is unfathomable you know just beyond comprehension and these guys live with post-traumatic stress disorder they live with problems and stuff like that and our country is not helping them so it's up to their brothers and sisters like me to do something in this world to try to help them you know and that's some of the reason i do this you know i have some other personal goals that I want to do too, like retiring myself and retiring my wife. But, you know, my, my ultimate vision is to be able to help a brother who's suffering from being in wartime, who needs the help that he cannot get. You know, I want to be able to help him financially, you know, find a home to live in, to get counseling that he needs, to get medical treatment that he needs and stuff like that. You know, it is a it really wears on my mind that our our government doesn't help these guys out more than they do. But then again, you know, it's not entirely the government's fault because our military is a volunteer military. So some of the sayings goes that, you know, what you signed up for when you sign up holds true, but you volunteered to give your life for your country. Your country should care about you in the end too. Yeah, that's definitely a complex issue. There's, always a lot of red tape and on the help that is provided. So I I definitely understand that. But like you were saying, you know, you have to, you just have to know why, what's going to get you up and out of the bed in the morning. Is it, you know, you're going to be a millionaire by the time you're 35 or are you, you know, you want to create, you're on a mission to impact the world. Um, You have to know which one you're doing first, basically. (laughs) Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, you know, and along with your mission, you know, you have to come up with your message and find your audience too with your message. You know, 
like my message in my, you know, my purpose and message just right there was about veterans, you know, it, and it, it has been for a long time. That's not my, that's not my sole vision of being an entrepreneur or being successful, but that's part of it. And that's a big part of it because I see what a lot of guys go through. My son's, you know, he was over in Okinawa the first two years he was in, he's in England the next two years, but he got, uh, six months in Qatar Qatar's right in the middle of the action that's going on over there he just went to Turkey for uh three months I think it was and I just seen he was in Florida I haven't talked to him because he was in Turkey I just seen on he posted uh something on Facebook the other day that he was in in Florida so he, he's home from Turkey so I'll be hearing from him here pretty soon but you know you need to come up with something that gets you out of bed in the morning. I mean, wanting to be at home with your kids, that's a good why. But I've heard it many times. Your why has to make you cry. What is the one why thing that makes you break down in tears and wants you, gives you a purpose to live your life, to achieve your goals? That's what you're looking for. Yeah, for me, I mean, for me, it's... It's evolved, like I said, but it essentially comes down to freedom, that I want my freedom, that I want to be able to do what I want, when I want, wherever I want, on my terms. Um, and I don't want to question, you know, is, is this, you know, is this affordable? Is this, can I do this right now? Or, you know, let me wait a month or two and, and then I'll do it because, you know, I'll be able to save more money. And I don't want to be governed in any way, shape, or form. I'm such a wild little unicorn like that, but I don't, I just don't, I don't want to be confined and I don't want to be, you know, in these black and white boxes and structure. Structure is just not me. Um, I, I've just never been that, that way. It's, it's always been something that I've, I've had a hard time um, accepting. Amazingly enough, I didn't die in school. I really thought I would, but uh, I was actually a pretty good student, but <laughs> only when I enjoyed, you know, the material being presented, that was, I was a terrible student. I got terrible grades when I didn't enjoy. <laughs> when I didn't like my teacher. I didn't like the subject. It was a bad, bad time. <laughs> yeah, if, if either one of us were structured at all, we'd meet two or three times a week to nail down our topic. And we don't, you know, it's, it's like, I, hey, oh, this, this week we were ahead of schedule. We did it like a Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Hey, let's talk about this. Okay, cool. And then we don't talk. No, it's like there's a full 24 hours this time. <laughs> no, but we always be, are able to deliver what's in our heart, what's valuable to you, what will help you move from point A to point B. And, you know, our purpose, along with, you know, some of the other things that we both said, one of our purposes is to help other people. Because let's face it, our economy is not getting any better. Our world's not getting any better. And it's up to you to either go out and change the world or make your world a better place. Because we're going to lead into mindset make, make, mindset makeovers and self-worth worth now because we all go through the struggle that we're not worth it and we're, we don't deserve to make money. And that's all crap that's built up in your mind, all programming that's built up in your mind over the years. You are more than capable of doing anything you put your mind to. You just have to put on the blinders and focus and do what you need to do to get it done. We're all going to go through the struggles. The ghost of fear are going to attack us at all times. And that's where the victim mentality comes from. That's where the, the mindset boohoo, poor me stuff comes from because you let them in. You have to fight them with what your purpose is. I'm rambling now. So no, you're good. You're still good. Um, but you're right. I mean, you have that, that hidden garbage and sometimes it really is hidden. Sometimes, um, you know, you can go through the self love process and you can, you can build yourself back up. I know for me, I was definitely broken when I started my mindset journey. I was definitely in a state of lack and a constant state of lack. I was, I was down. <laughs> I was in the negative 
So it took me a while to break even. And even when I did break even or thought I broke even <laughs> uh, going through, it's funny because like branding, right? As it stands, I hear people say that, oh, so-and-so did my brand for me. And I'm like, mm. because to me, if you go through a branding process yourself, one, you will experience a whole other level of mind shift. And two, it comes out far truer because it never fails. The people that I have heard say, oh, so-and-so did my brand for me, they end up changing it less than a year later. They're lost, they're confused less than a year later. They don't know what their brand, their message is, their mission is. They don't know their why. <laughs> Uh, they thought they knew and then they're like, well, I guess it's this and oh, I guess it's my, my kids or my family or I guess it's to be successful and um, you, you should know why. Th there should be without a doubt, this is what I am prepared to die for. This is my, if I had one breath in my body and it wasn't, you know, I told my family and my friends I love them already and all that kind of jazz, what would I use that one breath to say to the world? If you don't know what that is, you need to find it. There is so much natural evolution that occurs in the branding process, in mindset in general. I mean, I have heard Wayne Dyer for two years. I have seen his quotes. I have seen his material. And the first time I saw him, I was like, man, what a hippie, man. Like, I thought he was kind of cuckoo kachoo. And now I'm listening to him and I'm like, oh, I get what he's saying. Yeah, that's actually a scientific principle. <laughs> it's, it's taken on a whole new meaning. And it's funny because I have listened to the same CD. It's part of a series, you know, his uh, power of intention. I have listened to that same disc three, four times because each time something new stands out. And it, the first, you know, the first repeat was on accident. It just kept playing. But then I, my brain caught on. And I was like, oh, that, that, wait, I heard what he said the first time I listened, but I didn't really catch it. There's so much change. My mind now is so different from when I started. And that mind was so much different, you know, <laughs> eight years ago. I don't recognize me. 10 years ago, I don't recognize me. 15 years ago, I don't recognize me. You know, there's this, this brain that is in my head now is so structurally different with all the work that I put in. You know, every time you learn something, you have new connections for me. And I guarantee you, my highways look crazy up in there because they're just, I mean, they're everywhere. But like I said, I mean, going back, you know, five years ago when I was okay, I'm okay now. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to work on me now to, you know, three years ago. Like that, that, that shift was, was big for me. Those two years of personal development between 2012 and 2014 were, was a lot, a lot of shift from where I was, but from 2014 to now, holy cow, that is a completely different human being in my brain. Yeah, it's it's amazing how how we evolve as people as we learn, and uh, you know the one thing that stands out in what you're saying to me, and people should recognize that you need to work on yourself more than you work on your business, because if you're not willing to change the way you think, the way you speak, then you're not going to change. You know, and I say the way you speak because when you criticize yourself and you talk bad about yourself, you're the first person that hears it every time you speak it. So quit saying the negative. You know, my wife says she's fat all the time. And I don't, I tell her all the time that she's not fat. You know, she's beautiful. She's sexy because your brain hears that negative all the time by me reinforcing all the time that she's sexy, that she's beautiful, that she's <coughs> not fat, you know, that's reinforcing the positive back in her brain. And we do it to ourselves all the time. 
by talking negative to ourselves. You know, you'll do something. I, I mean, I'd, I'd still do it today. I do something stupid. Why'd you do that? That was stupid. You're a dumbass, you know, and we do it. You know, it's constant. And if you don't talk to yourself, there's something wrong with you because that's, yeah. I can't get, I can't get anything done without talking to myself. No. Hey, sometimes I just need really expert advice. So I have to talk to myself. Exactly. You know, <laughs> and you can hurt yourself by talking to yourself with negative self-talk. That's why the mindset is so important. Trust me, you know, I've been, uh, it's nine years, I think it is, that I've been in the home business industry. Uh, that's not counting, you know, in the 90s when I started door-to-door sales and Bramway, Quickstar, whatever the hell it was called back then. Um, you know, so the first seven years, you know, I try to do it all by myself, like a lot of us do. And I know I wonder what's been the, down the same journey. You try to do it all by yourself. And then when you find business partners, a community of people, you know, like Carlina, who's on in our chat, you know, and Barb Sanders Cole and Tim Cole are in our chat. And there's a few others that aren't saying hi and anything that are in there, too. You know, you get around these people. You grow as a person. You mastermind together. You know, you learn from each other and you grow as people and you're able to get away from that victimhood and get away from that negative mindset. Because they're instilling positive in you, you know, and you're instilling positive in them. You know, when I first come into our community, I didn't believe myself. My community believed in me and made me grow into the person I was. I remember one Wonder Wick come into the community, you know. She was sure of herself, but she didn't believe in herself. And I could see it in her eyes. Today, that's not the same Wonder Wick that come into our community. because You're going to make me cry. <laughs> She is a powerful person right now, and she believes in herself. Carlene. Carlene was the same way. She didn't quite believe in herself. She had the power. She was a powerful speaker, but she didn't quite have the belief in herself. And to see her now, I was on her live the other night. Oh, my God. She's just amazing. You know, Barb and Tim have been quiet here lately, you know, but they're amazing people, too. I've had them on my show before. Shout out to the Mavericks. And they're amazing people. And. You know, you get on live with Barbara, Tim, they can twist your mind six ways to Sunday. So being around people that you want to be like helps you grow as a person. You know, that's one reason I chose Wonder Whip because she bends my brain in ways that I cannot figure out. And then I pay her back by talking tech issues with her. And he confuses me and can just just jumbles all my narrow highways up there. And I'm like, <laughs> my brain hurts. It really does hurt. <laughs> it is physically painful. I assure you, it's like migraine status. But, you know, you were saying how I've worked on my mind more than I've worked on my business. And it's true. I've worked on my mind probably 10 to 20 times more than I have worked on my business. And it's... What really sank in, and I've said this before, I think, on our Hangout, but, you know, when I was at the co the company, and it's, it's really an industry event, um, back in August, hanging out with six, seven, eight-figure income earners, what I realized is that my language and my thought process was extremely similar to theirs. And that's saying something, because here I am, you know, where I have multiple mental health diagnosis, I have multiple chronic health diagnosis, I've been homeless twice, I've gone through the ringer, you know, I've, I've gone through several ringers. And here I was conversing with a millionaire on my left and a six figure earner on my right. And I belong and they're talking to me and they're looking at me like I belong, because my language and my thoughts belong there. So you do have, I mean, if that's, if that's where you want to be, if that's the, the you know, the, <laughs> this girl, if that's, you know, the uh, arena you want to play in, then you need to step up your game and it all starts in your mind. You know, over a year ago, I posted something about making a million dollar mind so that I could have a, a multi-million dollar life. And that's exactly the process it takes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, 
you know, I've said it numerous times, you know, I spend three hours on the road a day. I put in a 12 hour every day. Then three hours I spend on the road is nothing but mindset or training or motivational audios or something to intrigue my mind, get my mind working in the morning, get my mind thinking about what I need to do on the way home. Uh, that's what gives me content all the time. You know, I've listened to Eric Thomas so much time. I can probably recite half of his stuff, you know, um, you know, he talks about pain all the time. Pain is only temporary. It can last for a minute. It can last for or it can last for a second. It can last for a minute. It can last for an hour. But someday, it will, or one day, it will subside, and something else will take its place. And that statement is totally true. And I have heard him talk about it a hundred times. You know, we worry about our little failures. You know, and I've heard Eric Thomas say it took him twelve years to finish a four-year degree. Who takes 12 years to finish a four-year degree? Someone that is highly motivated and is determined to be successful. That's it. You know, and you get all this, a lot of it for free out there on YouTube. All you do is go search for it. But you have to want to change to be able to change. I can't even top that, so I'm just going to stay quiet. <laughs> you know. Who got me interested? I didn't even know who Eric Thomas was until I met Orderway, and she turned me on to Eric Thomas. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's been a journey ever since. So. The man can talk the talk and walk the walk. That's for sure. Eric Thomas, PhD from PhD preacher from homeless eating out of a trash can. Yep, that's impressive. Yeah, you know, and there's other great speakers out there. I mean, I, I can even go back into the archives. I have some Zig Ziglar tapes around here somewhere. And Zig Ziglar, Les Brown, you know, people like that. Uh, you know, I can't, the other big big one that was an Amway, too, I can't think of his name right offhand. I've got tapes of him around here somewhere, too. Uh, but, you know, it's good to pull out some of the archives and listen to them, too, because – they are the pioneers who started all this. They're the ones who created the attraction marketing, the, the mindset. You know, Diane Hawkins, she's for her 18th anniversary, she sent out a bunch of audios to people who were on her list. And there was her mentor in there. And her mentor, you can't even find on the internet hardly at all anymore. But I have some of his audios now. And, you know, they were audios that twist your mind and make you really think about stuff. You know, and that's what you got to do. Your mind's just like a computer. You just got to program it to what you want. And we're on overtime. So your final thoughts. My final thoughts. Um, entrepreneurship is a magical journey that can twist you up, but it is up to you to if you want to let it or if you actually want to untangle and grow things and really just become the person that you really do think you can be. And know that. And, um, you know, I went through a lot in, in my early years. And coming out the other side and becoming the person who I knew I was meant to be. And actually having faith in not just myself, but in my life. That's all worth it to me. That's awesome. Go read the comments. Barb's praising us, so you'll have to go read the comments on that. Bye. I want to thank Carlene and Barb and Tim for being here. And anybody else that was in the chat that wasn't commenting, because I see, you know, there's there's more people on that's in the chat commenting. But I want to thank you guys for being here. And make sure you come back next Thursday and hang out with us again. We'll have – we're going to keep going down this road, you know, of the journey. You know, and building stuff up. You know, we've been on this journey for what six weeks now. Has it been with, already? With, you know, about the same. It's topics building on top of each other down this road, and you know, and we're just going to continue to build on that because we want to help you help mold your mind and make you believe that you can do this because we believe you can do it, but we have to get you to believe that you can do it. And so, you know, come hang out with us next Thursday night. We'll be here again. We'll have another great topic. 
for you along the mindset lines, you know, or something related to what we've been talking about. Uh, hit hit us up Thursday night or Monday night for 24 hour marketing. And then uh, I have an Sonya. idea for next week. I'll message. I'll, we'll have to right. talk about it. <laughs> and then check out Sonia and Maria on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They were talking about Bitcoins this last week. I know that. And I actually seen, I got something on Bitcoins today and I kind of, kind of jumped in gin on it because it was a free club i could get on and on and learn about bitcoin so it was it was something worth checking out so i checked it out but uh you know make sure you hit them guys you know make sure you uh come back with us for some more information next week some more great valuable content and bring your friends with you because we're always growing we're always learning we're always teaching so come learn with us see you next week